How often in our lives do we explore the profound connection between our inner selves, our soul, and the ever-changing landscape of our lives? Life can be surprising at times, and sometimes the whiplash of these unexpected changes can often send shockwaves down to the core of our being. So how does our soul respond to these shocks? And what happens to our sense of identity in the process? Well, today on the show, we're going to explore a personal narrative with a friend you and I have grown to love over the past six months as he shares his own experiences of adjustment during times of change. The reflection and growth, I must say, is pretty profound as he shares how he has coped and even learned how to thrive in the face of life-altering shifts. Join us as we share insights about navigating soul shocks and finding the strength to adapt to life's inevitable changes. It's a captivating conversation that I promise will leave you thinking a bit more about how we respond to change. Let's start a conversation, shall we? Oh, (laughs) we gotta talk about that. Life is gonna get messy. If we're going down, put your mask on first before you can help anyone else. As we feel more established, we do start to look around and, and ask these kinds of questions. Welcome to Unconditionally Her Conversations, a podcast for women that sets the stage to spark inspiration, create change, and unite women from all walks of life. I'm your host, Karen Shane. This podcast shares that when we truly come together in sisterhood, we form a symphony of profound voices that have the power to transform each other's lives. So whether you're in search for motivation to chase your dreams or seeking wisdom to navigate life's twists and turns, or just simply yearning to connect with some kindred spirits, well, you found the place. Come along on this empowering journey as we explore captivating stories, conquer daunting challenges, and revel in the inspiring triumphs that shape the landscape of women's lives. Are you ready? Here we go. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. Welcome back to an old friend who has had amazing things happen in his life, and you have had the privilege to meet over the past several months. Carl Gibson is here, and we are once again hanging out in beautiful downtown Dahlonega, Georgia, on yet another mission that we're going to kind of share with you all later in the podcast. But for now, Carl, how you doing? Hi, I'm doing great, Karen. How are you been? We've got the Kleenex here. Oh, Lord. Let's hope we don't have to use those. I don't know. We are in the pastor's office where your world Changed. Yep, there comes the tears. I can see. I can see you <laughs> welling up already. You done got me started. And when you got started, so yeah. For those who don't know Carl, I would like to ask that you stop this podcast and take a listen to season one with the episode with Carl that we call My First Breath. The episode is centered around Carl's short film, also entitled My First Breath, the story of Carl Gibson, which is a deeply personal account of how this amazing man's life, once consumed by the dark abyss of drug addiction, found faith, perseverance, and an unwavering determination to restore his family and completely, and when I say completely, folks, you have to know complete is a big word here when I say he completely changed his life. And This remarkable story of redemption, transformation, and the power of faith just continued on this week. Again, that's a little teaser, Carl, for what we're going to talk about later on. But You don't want to miss it. No, but this is all about the power of faith in someone's life. But again, we'll share more about that. But people who saw the short, who also heard the podcast that we did last, or I guess it was fall of 2023, realized how your life completely changed. And you asked me a couple of months ago if we could gather together again to talk about being soul shocked. And that's why we're here today. And I actually have to tell you, I love the title. I've never heard the term soul shocked. So 
Why did you want to meet here and talk about this or make this a priority? I think uh, a lot of people don't even realize at times that their soul is being shocked. And it could come in many forms. I mean, it could come in joyful forms. It could come in grieving forms. It it could come in, in so many forms, but uh, and we not even realize what we're going through. And it does shock our foundation of our human being. And uh, and I think if we can give a little insight on how to navigate that and, and to be able to just adapt to those those shocks of our soul, you know. The whole changes what where life yes. throws you a curveball. Absolutely. Or makes great changes in your life. Yes, absolutely. And I think it I think it all comes back down to your faith in the good Lord above, you know, because mm-hmm. in a grieving situation you come closer and, and you get that comfort from the God above. And then in the joyful moments you're praising him for those blessings that he has just carried into your life. It's just like that breath we just took. Mm -hmm. That came from him. We don't deserve that. And we don't stop and realize, and when we take those things for granted, I think it just brings us back into relationship with the good Lord above. Well, let's talk just a couple of minutes about your story for those who don't know what you have been through. You, oh, wow, we could start unpacking all of this. But truthfully, those, again, I'm going to tell everybody, if you don't know Carl's story, stop. And go back and listen to the fall 2023 My First Breath episode on in season one. And you were a drug addict. And you started at an extremely early age. And it just spiraled your life to a certain place. Yes. Uh, you know, like you said, I was a very young, young boy. I started at the age of seven, huffing gas. And it progressed from there. And it's been, uh, it's been quite a journey. What a journey, and to uh, to be even sitting here today with you and doing this podcast, that's a blessing because I shouldn't be here today, you know? You know what, and the more that we delve into your story, and again, this is a teaser for later on in the podcast where we make, you know, have some conversations, but your life has been remarkable. I truly do not know how you are sitting here with me today. Starting at such a young age, huffing gas, then getting into the hardcore drugs, then spiraling and becoming a father and becoming a husband and going through all that you've gone through. And yet you still stayed on drugs and then an incredible transformation happened to you. And I I have to tell people who are listening right now, we are sitting in the space that Carl's life completely changed. We're actually sitting in the office, uh, sitting in the office at Delonica Baptist Church, where you walked in and said, I have lost everything. Everything that I have ever known and have ever wanted in my life is now gone due to drug addiction. I don't know how to get that back. And a beautiful man named by the name of Bill Hutchinson, who was pastor of Delonica Baptist Church at the time, really led you to Jesus right here, right here at this space and where we're sitting. You walked out of these church doors and your life completely changed. You put your family back together. You restored a relationship with your son, which was devastatingly broken, and your wife. And in the process, a baby girl came along and your story is just insanely impactful and beautiful. And through all of this, when you came to me and we began to talk about this podcast and you talked about becoming soul shocked, I think the whole definition behind this is that not only no matter, again, where you are in life, whether it's joy or whether it's tragedy, you have to be able to adapt and You learned an amazing ability to adapt in the moments of those times. So I want to know, when you walked out of these doors and you were known in this town as a drug addict, you had, there was, you know, pardon me for saying all this, but it's true. And if you watch the short film, you know, 
No one had respect for you. You were absolutely a disaster walking. And you walked out of this church and your life was changed. Tell me about that moment that shocked your soul. I think a change, any kind of change, shocks the soul. When I did walk out of these doors, I think that was really when I started beginning to live life. And I think the years prior was me wandering sort of in the wilderness, if that makes sense. I was still trying to find myself in all those years because I had neglected to even get to know myself. And I self-medicated with drugs. I was throwing a needle in my arm for eight and ten times a day just to stay numb to life because I never knew how to deal with life. And when life would throw those soul shocks to me, I didn't know how to deal with those. And so the only way I knew how to deal was with drugs. And that's what I did. But when I walked out of these doors, my new life started at that point. I had to learn to live the right way because I hadn't been living the right way before. And uh, it took some time to, to, to adjust, to adapt, but I refused to stay stuck in the mud. Sometimes when your life is and your soul is shocked, we like to stay stagnant, if that makes sense. A lot of times we don't like to deal with it, you know, we try to avoid the change in our life. But some things we just can't avoid. You've got to adapt. And that's what I had to do when I walked out of these doors that day in, in 2009, you know. And, uh, and it's, it's a constant change in life. And you just learn the best you can and depend on your faith and grow in to adapt. It's been tough, but it's been enjoyable. One of the things that I have learned through doing this short film with you is that you really had to overcome so much and you had to persevere with people knowing who you were and yet your soul is trying to adapt to this new person. But there was your past that kept up with you. And I have to tell this story. Um, when we were doing this short film, Kia with Coexist, my business partner, and Tyler were in the car. And we were going to what you termed as your depths of hell, which was back in your past. And we were in the car, and Kia is Canadian, everyone. And we were, <laughs> we got in the car, and you had a gun in your car. And um, didn't bother Tyler, didn't bother me. And Kia was like kind of flipping out. And she was like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, am, am I going to be canceled in Canada? Is This is just weird. And I said, Carl, why do we have a, a gun in the car? And you said, just in case we drive up on my past. And I remember that. And it was like Kia just went, oh, okay, I get it. So as you are going out to this massive change in 2009 and you are this new person, there are so many people in this town that knew you as not that person you are. And the, the switch that was flipped was for you, but not for them. And you had to face that head on. And so those who are going through a time of change, and whether it be a death or a divorce or a marriage or a something or another that they're going through, when your soul gets shocked you still have to deal with looking over your shoulder. But you kept going. And that's what I love about you. You never looked back. And it was hard. So let's go there. I was doing it for myself, first of all. In 2009, when I come to know the Lord, I had to fix Carl. I couldn't fix my family. I couldn't restore that at that time. And so I had to work on me. I had to change the person that I was. And I didn't want to be that person, the old Carl. And uh, that took a long time to adjust to because I, you get into habits of things and it just comes natural to you. And a lot of those, I had to stop. I would find myself leading me and myself back to my past. And then I had to, whoa, this, this is not me anymore, you know? And so I had to adjust and I had to adapt to my new life. I had to 
cut a lot of people off that I love dearly due to them still being users because they were family as well. And that was tough because I had to cut all ties. And, uh, but it wasn't because of themselves. It was because of Carl. I wanted to change and I needed to fix me because I was a damaged person at the time. And, uh, it was, it, it took time and, and it, it's not going to happen overnight, that change. You're not going to adapt overnight. And here's the most important thing. Do it for yourself. Because if you're not happy with you and the, the person that you are, you're not going to make anyone else in this world happy, especially a spouse, a child, or anything of that nature. Uh, just do it for yourself. So as you're walking out these doors and you have this new life, and the phone rings. And I, I, I've always thought about that as we've done this film. I've always thought, gosh, what happened when that phone rang? And it was your past calling you. And you're this new person. That is a shock to your system. How did you manage that? I think I, I managed it with the support system that I have surrounded myself with. Uh, when my past did call, I would, uh, a lot of times so, so call, send it to voicemail and, uh, and I would call my accountability partners. I would call Bill Hutchison because, uh, I'm going to tell you that man, he didn't only show me his love that day. He showed me God's love and how he loves each and every one of us. Bill didn't know me from nothing, just from what I had told him. And I told him how bad of a human being I was. I told him how bad of an addict I was. I told him what I'd done to my wife. I told him what I'd done to my child. But he did not hold that against me. He loved me as Christ loves each and every one of us. And that's so critical to build yourself around people like that, that believes in you when you don't believe in yourself. And uh, Bill did that because he gave me, you know, that day he gave me his own personal phone number and told me, anytime you feel like you're crumbling and going back to that lifestyle, call me. I will talk to you. I will meet with you. I don't care what time of the day it is. I'm here for you. And I, that's what probably saved me from relapsing and going back to my past because I, other people that I just surrounded myself with. And nothing, no offense to none of my friends that I, I'd left in the past. I just know it was time for me to move forward and get out of that rut that I'd been living in for 26 years. And, uh, and I am forever grateful for Bill Hutchins and the support team that I'd built myself around. And I've got four men in my life today that I can call right now if I am struggling with any of life's soul-shocking moments. And I do. I use that very frequently. And uh, so find yourself those folks that believe in you when you don't believe in yourself, when you feel like you can't, can't maneuver through and adapt to situations that life throws at us. And we all know that that can happen in a blink of an eye. Hmm. And so uh, find those people. That's going to be in your corner every day at any moment. So for those who um, don't know and who haven't listened to the last podcast, Bill Hutchinson, it was the pastor at Dahlonega, Bab uh, Dahlonega Baptist Church at the time that Carl decided one day he needed to make a change in his life and his soul needed to be changed. And he picked up the phone and he called and, oh, the beauty of the church and the beauty of Pastor Bill, who just said, come on. And you walked in his office. You'd never seen his face and he had never seen yours. And he sat there and he talked you through one of the hardest times of your life and totally made incredible change in your life. And allowed you to become a different person through 
him holding your hand, introducing you to Jesus, but also helping you to find the people around you that when your soul was ready to move to a new place, he helped you to find those people and he helped you to build a safe haven. And um, whoa, what a beautiful story. I'm, I, I just wish everyone knew what I know in, about you and just how bad it was and what a remarkable restoration that was for your soul at that time. You come through drugs. You come through this the complete change in your life. You have this incredible world. You have your family back. You're just living one big giant hug of life and um, learning how to hit the voicemail button I'm figuring out right now. And you you move on to this incredible productive life. And then later on in life, about, you know, it is just really a few months ago, you lost your identity again. But it was of a di- in, in a different perspective. You were working at a homeless community as their associate director, which is how I met you. And you've been there eight years. You had been through the ins and outs of not only operations, but working with the residents and the challenges of some of their lives too, which often paralleled with your own. And things there began to change and you were feeling that it was time to move on and that your world there was coming to an end. But as an associate director, you were on site. So your family was living on site and they were living in the housing that was provided for you, which was part of your job description and part of your job. And you were faced with a conflict that if you left, your family would have to relocate. And with a little bit of a tough past, your your options might not be as open as others, correct? And then Something amazing happened, and yet another God thing happened where you were given a home. And you had this gorgeous home, and you're transitioning from a job that everyone had known you in the community for so many years. And you were excited about being a part of that particular community. But yet, when you left, you had that identity crisis. You had to let go of an old, wow, I, I, I'm, as, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I'm just reliving that with you through the film. But you had to let go of that identity and let go of that life. And you had to reinvent yourself again. So you were challenged with a second time of reinventing yourself. Tell me what that was like. Well, I'm still in that process, Karen. Uh, I'm still still wondering a little bit and trying to find that identity, but we don't know what the future holds for us, and that's where my faith comes into effect again. I give it all to God. I know He knows what's best for me and my family, and He has done that in the past with the home that we were gifted with. Just an amazing story behind all that. But I'm still in that process, and I know I will figure it out soon. And so I'm adapting. I'm being human right now. And here's the good thing about it is I am dealing with this in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. I'm not using drugs. I'm not sticking a needle in my arm to run from this problem. And I don't call it a problem. I call this a blessing in in disguise uh, because... uh, My time was done there where I worked at. I truly felt that in my heart. I'd carried that torch as far as I could. And so it was time for me to transition out. And did I know what my plans were? Absolutely not. But that's, again, where I have faith in my good Lord above because I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. You've got to help me. You've got to help me with this. I have, I've run out of options and kind of thing. And, and next thing you know, I'm meeting with a gentleman in the foyer of a church and he says, I've got a home for you if you want it. And, uh, wow, you, you just can't, you can't make this stuff up. You know, you really can. I mean, and it's, and again, I, I'm still adapting. I really am. And, uh, but I'm doing it in a healthy way. And, uh, 
stand firm on your faith. If you believe, do you truly believe? You kind of thing. And, uh, and God's going to provide. Who knows what he's going to do in the future of my life? Because the last six months has been, it's been really crazy. And it's been overwhelming blessings left and right. But it's been challenges too. And I've watched you go through them. Because not everybody's job is connected to a home right. that you live in. And then when you are gifted a home, you have to leave your job. I mean, Carl, you're so unique and such a testimony of faith on every level. I mean, you've just gone through getting yourself totally clean and becoming a pillar of this community. Your job was attached to a home. Your home was completely ripped out from under you when you had to leave. But that's so shocking. That is. And to the average person, I'm not sure folks can adapt. And so how do you, other than faith, how do people embrace this change and not get all in the muddle of, oh, my stars, what am I going to do? Oh, my stars, how do I deal with this? And and how do they they find that identity? Because it is about finding your identity of who you want to be. I think it has got a lot to do with the people that surrounded me mm-hmm. and that believes in me and loves me and my family. And again... That support system comes back into effect at that time because, you know, if you've got multiple people in your life that you can reach out to, you get different perspectives of their life. They may have went through these kind of things and these kind of show shocking moments. The four men that I have in my life, they're quite older than I am. They've probably got 20 years, 10, 15 years on me. And so, uh, even though I lived that crazy, stupid, wild lifestyle for so many years, these gentlemen bring something else to the table. And that's what's so crucial about a support system, you know? Build yourself around people that different aspects from a pastor, from a counselor's point of view, from someone that worked for a power company for so many years. They bring different perspectives, and you can take those when you reach out to each one of those and you can apply those to your life. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then again, you know, faith keeps coming back into effect. Read the good word because you know what? You don't have to worry about today. I've got you took care of, he tells us in the Bible. You don't have to worry about clothing. You don't have to worry about food. You don't have to worry about shelter. I will provide those things for you. Just pick up your cross daily and follow me. And I think that's that's crucial. And and if you doesn't if you don't believe in that, you might need to read a little deeper, you know, kind of thing. And again, that support system is so so critical to have someone there that you can reach out to and talk to about those soul shocking moments that they may have lived, because. Uh, that input's very critical in your life, and, and that's exactly what I've done. I've used those people. Your job's not guaranteed tomorrow. That may happen to anyone at any moment, but mine was a unique situation, and I know everything happens for a reason. God has got something better for me on this other side, and I have 100%, 100% confidence into that. And I've bought into that because I know his promise is real. His grace and his mercy is real. And you've got to stand firm in it. You've got to believe in that. Not just 95%. You've got to believe it 100%. Because if not, you're second-guessing yourself a lot of times, you know? I want to talk about perspective. And um, I'm going to pause a second and literally lean back here because... Matt Scott, who is a partner in crime with with this film that we have done, I'm gonna. Um, I need your permission. Just, just kind of nod. 
because I'm going to go into something called perspective because you brought that up. Again, we're going to tell everybody what's going on, but just yesterday we reenacted. Um, who? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. That was one of the toughest ones. We talked about perspective, and um, we went back to the jail where you were taken, and um, when life got really bad, you you were incarcerated for a short time for some not so great things. And uh we went back to film. We went back to film that yesterday. I'm trying to hold it together. And um all I could think about when we were there and we were reenacting you being handcuffed. And as I sit here guys, I need to let everybody know this poor man is blue and is swollen from reenacting getting handcuffed. I think we counted about 12 times that this man worked so hard and and allowed us to go back there, but who go to that really deep place where his life changed just before he came to this office and he found a new life. But the deepest, darkest moments for him was in the jail cell at Lumpkin County, and you reenacted that yesterday. And you talk about perspective. I think all of us went there, and even Matt was saying, gosh, we got to give this guy a break. This is getting to us. But it's those moments that changed you, and it's that time, and it's that space of the deep, dark places that really help define who you are. And it gives you a unique perspective on life. Take me back there to yesterday when you were so grateful because there were moments you just said, I never want to go back there again. Yesterday we reenacted a time in my life that I'm not very proud of. It was tough uh, because if you've never been handcuffed, uh, that shocks your soul, and that's one of those bad shocks, you know. Uh, but I know through all this and re the reenacting, if I can give that one person that hope and the know-how to that it's possible to recover, to get out of those old lifestyles, and to change yourself. Uh, and that's, you know, yesterday was, it, it was sort of like therapy. And I've told you that, I've told you that, you know, I've, I've been taking these this week and, and even the short film, um, uh, I've been processing these little moments that we file away in the back of our heads and, uh, we don't want to deal with, but, uh, it's time for me to deal with those moments. And the most important thing is to forgive myself for those moments that I'd caused my family, all that hurt. So it's been like a little bit of therapy for me this week. And, and I have, uh, is it all good? Absolutely. It's good. Uh, is it tough? Absolutely. Again, you know, and, uh, but perspective, I knew I was getting to go home yesterday afternoon. I wasn't going to be spending the night in that cell. That's a different perspective than someone that's being incarcerated, knowing that they're going to have to have their meal there in that cold, dark jail cell. That brings reality, you know. Uh, yesterday was a reality check, but at the same time, I was proud of myself because I came from that jail cell to the man I am today. And that's been a hard road. That's been a hard road because I have had to repair myself and the relationships of people that do this community because I've lived here most of my life. And there's people with different perspectives of Carl. I was that mean, dopehead, drug dealer that would stab you in the back in a heartbeat person to the man I am today that you can depend on, that you can call on, 
that will talk you through any troubles that you have to give you hope, to give you tomorrow, you know? And, that, and that's just the person I am, and that's the way God does you. He doesn't just change one little bit of you. He changes everything, you know? And uh, and I just want people to know that they can depend on me. If someone's struggling, they're more than welcome to reach out to me, and I will do my best to talk them through any struggles in life. Because you know what? I am 50 years old. I'm young. But I have dealt with a lot of life. And, and a lot of it was self-inflicted. But I have dealt with about just about anything you can get thrown at you. And, uh, and guess what? With the help of people in my life, I have conquered those. So. Someone asked me to define you. And <laughs> the whole board <laughs> Before they saw the short film, someone asked me, um, uh, who never met you, they just heard me talking, asked me, said, how do, you, how do you describe Carl? And I said, he's authentic. But being soul shocked is what you hear. Whether it's been changing a job or defeating drugs or having to turn your back and hit that voicemail. <laughs> you are the most authentic individual I have ever met. So to someone who's going through just something minor that has come upon them, that, that has shocked their soul, how do you feel like perspective and authenticity can come of these deep moments? Because sometimes they're dark. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And uh, don't give up. Don't give up. You know, uh, you may have a storm in your life, but we all know what's happening after the storm is over, and it's the beauty of the sun coming out, the birds are chirping, the glistening of the, the rain on the, on, the, on the leaves, you know. Just know that tomorrow... It can be better, and as long as you stay positive, and that's easy for anyone that's not going through the storm to say, but stay positive and know there's always tomorrow that you can conquer this, and believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Don't ever doubt yourself, because when you put your mind to it, there is nothing in this world you cannot do, and... Uh, Trust me, I used to not believe in myself a lot. I didn't even know who I was for many, many years. I was, like I said in the beginning, I was wandering through the wilderness and trying to find my true identity. And, and it wasn't until 2009 I started finding that true identity. And, uh, and I'm still learning that today. But mainly, just do not, do not give up on yourself. Do not. I think it's so important because, again, we've we reiter I reiterate this. It, not everyone has had the life that you have had and the life that you have had to overcome, and yet the life you have built for yourself, as well as your family, which is your an amazing wife, your incredible son. Holy moly, this son is just. Hero. Ah, oh, we talk about that all day long. And then your beautiful daughter. And it's, no one has probably gone through the depths that you have gone through, but somebody out there is hurting. Yes. And that is what I just want them to know. And you are a living and breathing testimony of grace, resilience, determination, change. And how that truly letting go and let God and finding your path can be for anyone who is on the planet today, literally. And I know you well. I do know you well. And your thoughts are always purposeful. And we may kid around and you may be just a fun-loving, crazy guy at times, but there's a purpose in your walk, and that's evident. 
and I see it in your eyes that you are speaking to several people out there right now. And in the chance that they're listening, what is your message in this soul shocked podcast that you want them to know? I think, first of all, I just want people to know, hold on to hope. Hold on to knowing that your situation isn't permanent. Some things are permanent in life, but that's where we learn to navigate and we adapt to those things. But uh, my main purpose is here to say, you can do this. You can do this. And don't ever doubt yourself. Hold firm onto your faith and adapt and learn to live with it in a healthy way. And uh, just don't ever lose hope. Don't ever lose hope in yourself because uh, if you don't believe in yourself, we ain't got much to hang on to at that point. And be confident in your choices, you know. But pray about those choices before you make that choice. Don't be jumping the gun sort of kind of thing, you know. And uh, just believe in yourself because... I know for me it was took me a very long time to even believe anything was possible for me to change because I had damaged so many relationships over that 26 years period. I lost my, my mom and dad. The shocks of those, I, you know, they've been gone, going on 14, 15 years now, and I'm finally at the point to where I can deal with that grief and I think it's because I have learned to deal with things in a healthy manner. And, uh, and it doesn't happen overnight. It really doesn't. But these soul shocking moments, don't let them define your identity. Stand firm in who you are as a person and hit those head on. Hit those head on and don't try to veer to the right. Don't try to veer to the left. Hit them dead in the middle. Deal with it. Get it behind you because tomorrow's better. Tomorrow's better. Whatever it holds because we don't know what's on the other side. We don't know. We can't predict the future, but we just got to have faith that tomorrow's going to be better. Tomorrow's going to be better. And guess what? If you, as long as you keep that mindset, and you tell yourself tomorrow's going to be better, and you get up each morning and say, hey, today's going to be great. Today's going to be great. And guess what? You've got a better chance of making today great by just believing in yourself and living firm in that faith. You know, we teased at the beginning of this podcast about some really cool stuff happening right now, and we kind of gave it away a little bit with the handcuffs, but by the time this podcast airs, we will have completed the filming, which just happened today, and we'll be close to completing, right, Matt? Be close or completely done with a full feature on your life, and that's because we had such an incredible response to the short and people wanting to know more about your story and more about who you are and more about the soul-shocked moments of your life. and. We had to leave out so much in the original film um, that was back in the fall of 2023. But, man, it's all out there. And there's going to be a lot of people seeing this, and there's going to be a lot of people you don't know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people seeing this. And as you sit there right now with the bruises on your wrists from us making you reenact some soul-shocking moments of your life, what are you feeling right now? I'm happy because I know through all this feeling, through all this pain that I'm having to revisit, all this hurt that, you know, because it was hard for me in the beginning to forgive myself. And I'm still in the process of that, you know, today because uh, I know for myself it's hard for me to treat anyone bad. 
but it used not be for me. And uh, for me to forgive myself for the things that I've done to people in my life that I'd encountered over the years has been really hard. But you know what? I know through this film, it's going to reach that one soul, that one soul that I've been telling you that I've been wanting to help. And I hope it's thousands. I hope it's tens of thousands of people that hears it and knows there's hope that there is a way to change your life to recovery and through recovery. But I'm overwhelmed with joy and blessings because I know it's going to help that one soul. And I can't wait for for it just to happen to that so i do i need to know that person absolutely not that's not my place because you know as much as i do we're doing this all for the glory of god you know you say it's the story of carl gibson it's actually not carl gibson's story this is god's story i'm just a character in his writings and you know what i truly believe when you came to me and I came to you, this was God's will. He lined this up perfectly because, you know what? This is going to change lives. That needs to be changed, and it's going to be beautiful. I know it is. I know it is. I fully, fully believe that in my heart. And I, I am forever grateful for you for God to even bring you into my life, even though I wasn't going to give you a chance when I first met you. That's in that episode <laughs> earlier, just to let everyone know. And bringing Matt Scott in my life, Kianaka, and then Tyler Goins as well. What an, an amazing production team y'all are. Y'all have blessed me and my family, and and I can sit and look at you today and truly say you're not only my friend, you're my sister. And... Uh, I love you so much. I love Matt. I love Tyler. I love Kia. And, uh, man, I'm telling you what, God has just showed out with the people he's put in my life. And uh, anyone out there listening, he can do the same thing for you. I promise. I promise you can take my word at 100% there because, but here's the key thing. You've got to be receptive. You've got to want change. It starts with you and ultimately it finishes with you. I am so blown away by what you said and to wrap up I need you to know how much I love you. I met you in um twenty twenty one and my life has never been the same. And um I always said and I mean that that I need you to know this from the bottom of my heart. You have brought forth a witness of transformation and resilience and grace and faith to the table. And you are an inspiration to me. And I, I have said this, and I will say it again. If Jesus walked through those doors today and he looked me square in the face and he said, I will give you any person on this earth you want as a brother i'd pick you i love you. i love you too carl gibson thank you for being here thank you for having me and for those who didn't listen to didn't listen to the previous podcast please go back and listen it is uh, you don't want to miss it folks. you don't want to miss it the film's coming out soon and um i will tell you it is life-changing and it's going to be remarkable. And there's going to be many lives changed. That is true. Thank you for being here. And go Vols. Just go Vols. And just to let you know, I would pick you over Peyton Manning. It would be hard. But I would pick you over Peyton Manning. It's it's interesting. I love it. Yeah, I still got to think about that Peyton comment. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Okay. We're wrapping. We're wrapping. It's a wrap. Want more inspirational articles and stories or maybe even a recipe or two for the fam? Head on over to unconditionallyher.com and just say hi. Until next time, ladies, be blessed, be inspired, 
be empowered, and always be unconditionally you.